Thank you for joining uh, this uh, Wednesday teaching uh, from the FRCS Mentor Group. Um, this evening, our presenter is one of our senior mentors, David uh, Hughes. He's a surgeon from Warwick, and he's also the convener of the Warwick um, FRCS course, which is an excellent um, clinical course. Maybe he could tell us about this course later on, if he likes. Um, we have also with us uh, Amjad. Amjad is one of the new mentors here, and uh, we're very grateful to have him as an active mentor in the group. Uh, myself, uh, Firas, I'm going to help uh, modulate the session. Uh, please uh, uh, pay attention. The session title is, is very important um, and commonly overlooked, which is um, key scoring points for history taking. It's something we take for granted. However, it's very important, and uh, David is going to tell us all about it. Um, the key scoring points for taking history for the FRCS exam. Uh, please ask questions on the chat option or raise your hand symbol next to your name uh, if you like to talk or ask any questions. And there will be a short, brief Viva session once we finish. Only um, two or three candidates will be picked. So please, if you're interested in taking part, uh, express your interest as early as possible. So I will leave you with um, David from now on. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much. Um, I know it's Wednesday our evening, but this is important. So one thing that uh, often gets overlooked when, we, when we're studying for the uh, uh, fellowship exams is history taking, because we do it all the time. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes when you're doing something all the time, you, we do drop into bad habits and it's quite easy to miss something. So when I run the Warwick FRCS uh, course with Mr. Hashmi, and um, we've got one course coming up next week. We, this is from a previous course where we did talk about it and we discussed this, and a lot of the candidates found it very useful. So I'm, I'm letting you guys know about it, particularly as the exam's coming up in just over six, under six weeks now. So you can start thinking about your history taking. So it does actually count quite a few marks and they're easy scoring marks. So if you can do well in that, in the intermediate case, it'll set you up for the clinical quite well. And you need to pass the clinical to pass overall. There are very few people who passed just on survivor. Most of the people pass because they've passed the clinical well and you can make up so many marks there. Okay. So this is just, so we're just going to start off with a little bit of the clinical exam. So obviously we know it's you know it's one hour long. Um, so that the key thing is two intermediate cases, which last about 30 minutes. So two cases, 15 minutes each. There are three sections in it: history, exam, discussion. You need to go through all three of those. You need to get to discussion. You don't you don't get to discussion. You only score four for discussion, and then it means you're only scoring four for history and exam generally. They very rarely pump your mark up. Okay. So it is key that you are very succinct in your history taking, get the salient points across, so you can score well, and that can push you on to get, getting a good clinical exam and getting on to discussion, because that's where the meat of the points are going to happen. But still, in terms of the history, you're getting two examiners in each history, so that's four scoring, um, yeah, so four scoring opportunities, okay? So if you can get a good eight, you're starting well, aren't we? All right. And we all know about the short cases, upper limb and lower limb. Um, so for six cases, five minutes each. But I'm going to focus mainly on history now, than the intermediate. So when you look at the examiner's manual, and they, they, they give us this as well, it's quite a lot to take in, isn't it, really? Um, bedside manner, quality of response, lots of different points. And so we kind of glaze over it, I have to say. I did as well initially, and thinking, blimey, what's all this off? Um, but in my process of looking around for um, tips about the history taking for the exam, um, I sort of discovered a few key things from previous exams. So, so these are the key headlines you they want to see when you're doing a history. Obviously, quality of history obtained. So if you're a person with a hip problem, they want to make sure you're finding things about the hip problem, not about, the, about their cat from 1922. So it's about, it's very important to stay focused on 
what you've been asked to. And that's usually in that little summary at the beginning where they say, please ask this question, this person about their, their knee, their hip, their shoulder. Um, they also want to see how you get on with the patient, ability to communicate with the patient. So you've got to be friendly, you've got to be polite and courteous. I, I, I've done a bit of teaching for people doing the MRCS and it's all about introducing your name, saying what you're doing, smiling, washing your hands. These things do count and it helps with the patient. It makes, the, it makes you look professional. Um, presentation of the principal find, clinical findings, okay? Differential diagnosis, investigation pathways. These are things that they want you to, so, to talk about in the history. Uh, and when you come to the discussion, they're talking about the suggested interventions in management, including the role of surgery and relevant basic sciences. Now, what we sometimes forget when we're taking history, and this is very important um, from our point of view, is social implications of the condition. So, yes, it causes them pain. It stops them being able to do their job. It stops them being able to um, do their normal level of activities. These are things they want you to ask and state. And then important considerations for in consent. So will this person be able to follow the rehab? Do they understand the implications of having the operation? Do they appreciate that, yes, the knee replacement would be great, but it might take them six months before they're feeling better. Um, they also want to know morbidity and complications. So key things from a surgical point of view, are they on aspirin? Are they on warfarin? Are they insulin? And so these are sort of little things you need to make sure that are aware of. Also health promotion considerations, if you can get that involved, i.e. conservative measures, have they lost weight? Are they doing physio? Things like that. Uh, and it, again, this is a difficult thing, being able to gain confidence of the patient in such a short space of time. But again, if you have a nice ease and you, ha and you have a good pathway of how you're going to ask questions, it does help and it, and it will get the patient on your side. Most of the time, these patients want to help, they do. So as long as you're polite and courteous to them, they will, they will, they'll be nice to us and they will be helpful and they'll give you, be positive. Sometimes don't be too courteous. I had one poor person, I stupidly asked him questions about his model train set and the, I could see the back of my eyes, the examiner's eyes rolling saying, oh no, not another one who's asked that question. But it is important. You can be polite and say, oh, that's very good, that's very interesting. Can I just get back on to asking about your back or your hip or your knee? So it is, it, 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 do try and get in their confidence, but bring them back to the subject matter, okay? So just the key things when I'm taking the history, I like to make sure that when you're doing this, that you have these, these things in your, in your um, background. So introduce yourself presentation or what why they why are they here today no not because of the exam what first brought them to see um, to see a doctor about this problem ask medical history so previous surgery um relevant issues so have they got heart problems lung problems um drug history so as i say the key things anticoagulants steroids um it's rheumatoid disease modifying drugs and diabetes Social history, so hand dominance, if you're doing an upper limb case, is very important. Occupation, if they're still working, and it is, even if they're retired, as a lot of our patients will be, do ask what they used to do, because that may have some effect on them. Smoking as well, particularly if you've got a foot exam, because there's so many foot surgeons, as soon as you say smoker, they go, right, okay, I don't need to do anything. And very important is patient expectations. Do they want the surgery? Is that what they want from out of the consultation with you? Now, a little trick that you can do after you've taken the history is to summarize your findings to the patient. That way, you look good to the examiner, and then you can ask the question, is there anything I've missed? And you never know, at that point, the patient might tell you something very important and pertinent. Then present your findings to the examiner rather than the other way around. Because once you've presented the examiner, you can't go back, because the examiner will go, what about this, what about that? But if you summarize the patient first, and they will help you fill in any gaps that you've missed. But this is a very useful tip, and I know lots of examiners have mentioned, past examiners have mentioned this before to me, and saying this is a good way of being able to make sure that you don't miss anything. And actually, when you say that, that's when it gives the patient the opportunity to help you as well. So, um, 
we will. Uh, it's difficult to do an examination on, online uh, um, in this sort of forum, but I will go over a few things. So I'm not going to go over clinical exam in detail, but I want. But you've got if you've got the exam coming up, you've got a month now. So at this stage, I'm hoping that you're honing your skills. You're getting, and if you're in clinic, grab your consultant and say, I need to examine the shoulder or I need to examine this hip. I want you to look at me examining this patient and tell me where I'm going wrong or where I'm going wrong, how I can improve. This is very important. You've got to look slick when you're doing this. It's very key if you can get the examination in under three minutes, get all the important things across, because that will give you lots of time to get to the better discussion. And that discussion is a, a mini viable station, basically. And, you can, and if you score well on that, it'll give you good points overall, okay? Um, I think we've all seen this book by uh, Nick, Harris, Nick Harris and Faisal Ali. It is a fantastic book. Um, if you haven't got it, get it. Um, I'm going to talk in broad principles with regards to the clinical exam. It's about having a system so that you, you, it's quite easy to get flat and concerned uh, and nervous and anxious. But if you have a system, it makes life easier for you, it allows you to go back to basics. And, very often that situation, the examiner will say, we'll point you in the right direction because they want to help a lot of the time. But if you're being bombastic, dogmatic, and you're going yourself down the cul-de-sac, they might just watch you. But if you have a nice system, that will help. So it's a good case of look, not just at the patient, look at their shoes, look for when you're walking aids. So you've got to use everything around you. And feel for the patient, avoid pain. So that the key thing is any time you're examining them, make sure you can see the patient's face so you know they're not causing the pain. If it's, a, if it's a shoulder exam, say you want to do it from the back of a mirror, that's how we do it normally, so I can see their face and make sure I'm not causing pain. Already gets you in the patient's good books and the examiner's good books because you're showing due consideration for the patient. And once you've got the patient on your side, the exam's a lot easier. Um, move with only lower limb don't, and spine, don't forget to walk. I'll see a special test. I mean, it, if you've got Pfizer book, it is fantastic. It has all those special tests. And what you, I can tell you, I've been on the train going to the exams. I've seen examiners coming in, and they've got the book in front of them on the train, reading, reading it, trying to make sure they can get through the, uh, they can remember how to examine the shoulder or a knee, particularly if they're a, 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 a hand surgeon or a foot surgeon. They've never done it for ten years or so. I sound like I'm repeating myself, but I cannot stress this enough. Discussion is very key. You have to get to that discussion bit. It's very easy to feel to get caught in the history taking or and then rush through the exam before you realize you've only got one minute left to do the discussion. Try and get your history done in under three minutes if you have. Four minutes is fine. I know they say leave up to five minutes, but you want to give yourself time. And again, examination, you can do most systems under three, four minutes. That gives you five, six minutes for the discussion. Okay? And you can score lots of points there. And again, I can't stress this enough. With the exam, they're quite harsh in terms of if it's four for the discussion, because you haven't done a discussion, it's four for the history, it's four for the clinical. Okay? So you need to get a discussion. That way you can get the scores that you've earned from the good history and the good the clinical exam. Okay? Talking about here is for history taking, obviously for the intermediate cases. Yeah, oh, yeah intermediate cases. Sorry, yes. So yeah, you will, you may be asked in the short cases to say what questions you might want to ask. A classic one would be so if you're showing a short, uh, an obvious thing like someone who's got dupatrins in a short case, they might say, "What one question do you want to ask this patient?" Um, and if you can see both hands, the thing to ask then is say, do you have any involvement of your feet? Does that look, see, that already tells the exam that you know that there's, there's other, disease, other disease processes involved. But things like that. So it's where, but they, they, it will be something that's, there won't be barn door as such. And again, again, that going to hands, rheumatoid arthritis in a in short case, they may also again ask, is there any questions you'd like to ask? The key thing then is to ask about function. What can you do with your hands? What do you want to be able to do with your hands? 
That's very important there. And that, again, key as well, if you have a rheumatoid patient in the intermediate case, it's a fantastic history in a way because actually there's so much. You can just focus on a little bit of the, of the history for the rheumatoid hand. And the key thing they want to know in that, for example, is disease modifying drugs and what they're doing with the hands and function. And very important as well, what the patient wants, what the patient expectations are. So you might see patients with so much pathology, you don't know what to do. Actually, the patient's going, I'm fine. I'm actually not in any pain. I'm just here because I've got good signs. Job done. And actually, that's a, uh, the exams are happy with that. They're fine with that because it, it, they know in the exam, there's so much to talk about with a, with a rheumatoid hand. And it's quite easy as a candidate. You see a rheumatoid hand like, ah, what do I do? What do I talk about? Um, but as I say, if you can do a focused thing about function, because what can you as an orthopedic surgeon do, improve, on, help reduce pain and help fu with function. That's what we're doing with most of, most of our interventions. So if the patient's fine with their function, fine with pain, we're not really gonna help them, are we? Yeah. Absolutely, I think this is uh, very important, uh, David, as you said, if you, if you are short, in, if any of the candidates is short on time for any reason, during the intermediate case, for example, you know, is if you've been faced with a complex uh, case uh, or when you don't have time in the short cases, if you're stuck, just ask the patient about the pain and the function and what do they want um, and, uh, or how the condition is affecting them. And that, that, that will guide you through what you do. Because again, with the intermediate case, um, you will have obviously two intermediate cases for the exam as you guys know and you will receive a referral letter uh, the examiner will give you a referral letter from a gp with two lines very very brief not like a normal gp letter something like you know 55 years old lady complaining of shoulder pain please advise yeah like that it won't it won't really have any any useful much info just focusing you on, on which part of the body um, to, to look at. And then, as I said, just take a focused history, be precise with the pain and, um, for example, where is the pain and things like this, be precise with that. And, you know, patients can distract you a little bit. They can tell you, well, my leg hurts. You, know, you need to get to the bottom of it where, mm. ask about the pain, ask about the function, um, social background, medical background, what the patient expectations. You've got to cover all these and very, very important not to skip through any of these. And then as uh, David said, summarize at the end, because um, the summary uh, at the end might, uh, you might find out, you know, it's, it's a chance for you to go over things again when yeah. you summarize. As I say, I, when I say so, yeah, really important. Summarize the patient first, and that way they have the opportunity to answer, to say yeah. what you missed. Yeah. If you don't write to the consultant, to the examiners, then you, you've all missed that boat. So, very really big take home. If you can summarize, remember to take back, uh, to take home today is when you've done your history, a quick summary to the patient. And that is another way as well of demonstrating how you, in a quick and easy way of actually getting the patient on your side as well. If you're talking to them as a person, you're not, you're ignoring the examiner and they love, the patient will love you for that. Short cases, cases. Uh, guys, please, if you, can, if you want to write it down, ask three questions. Where is the pain? How is your condition affecting you? And what treatment have you had so far? And I think these three questions will get you out of majority of trouble in the short cases. Short cases are very difficult. And again, uh, also as well, just to, uh, to add to that as well, um, when in that situation where you have a very vague thing like the examiner's person's leg, Use your eyes, look around. There will always be a clue. You'll find there's a walking aid. You'll find that actually they've got calipers or they've got a big shoe, a shoe raise. There's always going to be something there obvious that they, will, that, that they want you to use your eyes. They want you to look. So there will be a clue there. When it's something vague, there's usually a clue. Ask the patient a question or there's a clue around near the patient which will point you in the right direction. So if you, and they will, give you big thumbs up if you say, oh, I'm just gonna look at this shoe, it's a big heel raise. Well, hey, you're the first person who's done that, big tick. So just use your eyes and look around and be aware of your surroundings. Yeah, 
Uh, when you're practicing with your colleagues for uh, history, please uh, allow only four minutes, not five minutes. That will be the end of this uh, webinar. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you very much, uh, David, for giving us uh, this uh, wisdom and teaching us about uh, FRCS-focused uh, history taking. And thanks uh, to Amjad also for um, stepping in and helping us. Uh, we will end this session. Yeah. Okay, uh, just before, so before we go, I just want to say we you've got time. So I know you're all focused on practicing your vivas, but please, please, please spend the time as well thinking about what you're going to do in a history situation, and start thinking about your clinical exam. Go, you do. We do clinics on a regular basis. When you're in clinic next, you've got an interesting case. Say to your consultant, "I'm going to examine this patient." Can you look at me examining the patient and give me a critique? And then I'm going to summarize to you, can you give me a critique as well? They work that most of, the, most of the consultants will be happy to do that. So, but it's important that you practice. Do not be in that situation where the first time you're being examined or being tested is the exam situation. So if you haven't got, done a clinical course, you can do one in your own clinic with your consultant. So please, please, please practice, practice, practice. You've got time. You can get, you can look slick by the time you get to the exam. So keep it. So and yeah, if one one thing you get away from today is you know you have to do practice. Please, that'll be that'll give you so much more points in the exam. Okay. Sorry. Right. For, uh, and David, David runs uh, this uh, fantastic clinical course. Not many around, and there is one uh, next week. Mm -hmm. uh, so please, uh, if anyone is free or next Thursday, Friday, you're free to. You are welcome to register. There are still some places. So uh, thank you very much. And if anyone who has attended uh, today is uh, interested in a CPD certificate, please get in touch with me and I will uh, show you one. So thank you very much. We'll, uh, we'll end this session now and there will be um, a Viva session